Next, let's talk about the stresses on inclined plane. Previously, when we talk about the normal stress, we are often talking about the stress that is acting on a vertical plane. But now, we will consider the stress on an inclined plane. And there are a lot of things that we can do with it. So let's have a look. For this bar, we cut this bar through this line. It is an inclined plane. On this inclined plane, there is a inclined shear force V theta and an inclined direct force F theta. Also, on this inclined plane, there is normal stress sigma theta and the shear stress tau theta acting on it. The cross-sectional area of the vertical cross-sections is A. So, for the inclined surface, the cross-sectional area is given by A divided by cosine theta. So this is A. Then for this inclined surface, the area will become A divided by cosine theta. The normal force and shear force acting on this inclined surface will be F theta equals to the normal stress times the area, while the shear force is given by the shear stress times the area. Still very similar definitions. Now consider this cut piece of stuff. On this piece of material, there is a transverse load P pointing leftward, and for this inclined plane, there are two forces, namely V theta and F theta. By its statics, we decompose those two forces into vertical and horizontal directions. Firstly, we have to know what is theta. For F theta, theta is located here. Notice that don't make the mistake that you put theta here, it is wrong. We derive it by taking this angle as theta. Now consider the horizontal direction. The left hand load P equals to F theta cosine theta plus V theta sine theta. Besides, consider the vertical direction. F theta sine theta minus V theta cosine theta equals to zero. Then we substitute those two equations into the system, such that this system has two unknowns. One is theta, one is sigma theta, one is tau theta. Those two are the unknowns that we are going to solve. Now we replace a theta by using a divided by cosine theta. Then we simplify the system. Besides, we rewrite the system such that we can do some cancellations of the equations. For those two rewritten systems, we adopt 1 minus 2 to get this result. Besides, by this rewritten system, we have the direct stress of the inclined plane. Finally, we can see that, finally, we see those two important results. The rest stress on inclined plane is given by P cosine squared theta divided by A, while shear stress on inclined plane is given by P cosine theta sine theta divided by A. We can explore a little bit on those two equations. In solid mechanics applications, we don't want a material to fracture. Therefore, we are rather interested to the maximum direct stress and the maximum shear stress. For maximum direct stress, consider cosine theta in this equation. Its maximum value is 1, which occurs at theta equals to 0. That means, for your bar, if theta equals to 0, that means the surface is vertical. And when you have a load acting on it, then there is load P acting on the surface too. The stress on this vertical surface is P divided by A, which fulfills our expectation and what we have learned previously. Besides, for the maximum shear stress, it is a little bit special. Consider cosine theta times sine theta. Its maximum value is 0.5 occurs at 45 degrees. Therefore, the maximum value of cosine theta sine theta is 0.5 and the maximum shear stress occurs at theta equals to 45 degrees, which is P divided by 2A.